Hey, we're talking about Sci-Fi Tonians, The Reunion, up next on Geek Out SA. Do not attempt to adjust your YouTube video. We control the street. <laughs> And welcome back to Geek Out SA. It's Friday and we're having fun. And we have a guest here. Alejandro, how's it going? It's been a long time. Uh, trying to keep my glasses on. <laughs> you can't. But we like, have to wear impossible. masks to respect mutual respect. So. Yeah. Yes, and we're still pretty close to each other. And I'm just like, we're kind of far away, yeah, so we don't get there, to, yeah, fine. way over here. But, uh, hopefully you can hear us. Although I think Destiny and I did pretty well. A couple of weeks ago because we had a guest a couple of weeks ago and she and i were in our mask so i think we just project yes we yeah. have to talk very long <laughs> <laughs> so we're here so this is the whole uh whole new thing this is sci-fi tonians uh the five year um reunion. anniversary reunion yeah reunion and uh so sci tell us what sci-fi tonians is so the first one. The first one. The only one. The only one. Yeah. Sci-Fi Tonians <laughs> was a um, a documentary that I did in 2000. Well, came out 2015, and mm -hmm. it covered Alamo City Comic Con's first and second show. And so I filmed 2014-2015, and uh, it came out August 31st to the movies 2015, and then it was released online on August 6, 2015. And it's about the Alamo City Comic Con, but also the Comic Con, the comic book subculture in San Antonio, the the I hate the word geeky, because uh, I, I find it to be so derogatory, right? But, uh, for lack of a better word, but but we're geeky. The the, the, <laughs> geek, the geek culture, uh, it covers the geek culture and how that culture inspired the Alamo City Comic Con and how you know that the success of Alamo City Comic Con also came from that and vice mm -hmm. versa. And so, yeah, because you talked to a, a cosplayer mm -hmm. in the documentary. And um, we talked to a cosplayer. We talked to uh, a professor at UTSA mm -hmm. who was inspired by the subculture in San Antonio and did a, did a class called the Anthropology of Superheroes, uh, which he's still doing. I've talked to him recently, and he tells me that there is a waiting list to get into that class. It's oh, wow. very successful. And um, a vendor and uh, many other people in the community, um, people from the Wolfie Walk and yep. stuff like that. So it was, there was a lot that had to do with Alamo City Comic Con because that brought kind of the limelight, I guess, to the geek culture that was always there. Right. But you added in other things. So it wasn't like an Alamo City Comic Con documentary. Correct. So it's not an Alamo City Comic Con documentary. They were featured. I mean, it, I would say mm -hmm. Alamo City Comic Con was like a character, but it, it basically showcases how this community um, inspired the Comic Con and just how both of them um fueled each other and and um benefited from each other and inspired each other um so yeah i, I can't believe it's been five years yeah. i can't either i so, still remember going to the draft house and, and going to the premiere that was really cool uh to check that out then and uh, we interviewed you back then I remember that uh yeah. when we when, when you came on i and... was so nervous i think <laughs> you guys were like the the only interview that i did there yeah i did one for the news and then you guys and that was it yeah. yeah yeah but it was great it was great to be there and to yeah. see your documentary um if people haven't seen it they should definitely go and watch it because it is a good peek at some of us here in san antonio and who we are um and if they want to go and see it where do they go see it um i forget the name of my youtube i need to give up with that but i will send you the link okay and i'll and you can post it um and yeah and that way they can or even it. maybe um uh, put in youtube sci-fi tonians sci yeah, uh, yeah, sci yeah. Sci yeah. Sci i think it's like one of the first mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. i think it's one of the first ones that comes up there yeah. so yes definitely check that out that's uh that's coming in but five years later now you have a reunion uh, anniversary special now correct uh for uh, sci-fi tonians so can you kind of like let me know what was what was the idea behind this the reunion, the reunion. So the reunion really um i knew that it was going to be five years mm -hmm. this year with the anniversary of, of that and it was such a great experience and and this documentary locally within our community here in san antonio 
um, was very successful and I was very surprised. I didn't think it was going to be, the response was going to be that great. And so I wanted to, I was curious to see where everybody was at five years later. And I wanted to have a discussion about that. And um, originally when the year started, I had this idea. I wanted all of us to sit in the couch because what people mm -hmm. don't know is that when you do a documentary, especially something like this, you usually come together with people that you normally don't normally know or, you know, right. And so um, people think that you keep in contact with everybody. And the reality is, is that, you know, you come together because you have this common interest. My, in my case, it's wanting to tell that story. In their case, it's they're telling their story. And once it's done, that's it. So you really don't right. get to keep, keep in contact with the exception of Stephanie Dowd, which we're really good friends, but we knew each other from college. She's the cosplayer. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and so I was curious to see where everybody was at. And um, I, I don't know, I haven't released a video in a while because I'm working on a, the, the Star Wars Times Texas documentary. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know, I was like, let me just put something out. COVID hit. And so the plans of all of us sitting together in a couch, and this, that's another thing, when you do something like this, not everybody knows each other. Like I know everybody because I'm the one in charge of mm -hmm. it, but nobody knows each other. Right. And right. so I was curious to have everybody sit down and meet everybody and have a discussion about it. And when COVID hit, those plans were scrapped. Right. And um, in August, I was like, well, maybe we could still do it. And um, I reached out to Joey Devine from the Wolfie Walk, and he said, hey, dude, like I have a studio. Let's do it in my studio. And so we did it socially distanced. Everybody came separately. I interviewed everybody separately. And um, I didn't want to, I, I reached out to, to Vince, but I was like, you know what? I don't want to do a Zoom thing. Mm -hmm. I want to do something that still has quality and something that's still good. And so right. um, we we filmed it about three weeks ago and um, comes out tomorrow at 9 p.m. I'm excited about it. And that. you've already put it together and I'm, wow, it, nice. Well, I'm still finishing up this some just, you know, little tweaks here and right, there. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, it's basically it's basically finished. Very nice, very nice. Um why don't we go ahead and queue up the uh, the trailer? It's exclusive trailer for Geek Out SA here. You have an exclusive clip. A very exclusive clip. Yeah. And so I just want to talk about the clip real quick. Yeah. So one of the questions that we answer many questions, um, one of them is like where we are, what has happened five years later. But one of the questions is um, how has Alma City Comic Con changed since the documentary? And um, uh, uh, I was, it's changed a lot. It's changed a lot. <laughs> yeah. I was very surprised by the answers, but I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys. Okay. And quick. I'm going to get up so I can go yeah, watch it. Let's check I it out. So in 2015, uh, when they released Star Fightonians, I, I think that was the main year, at least for me, how I felt it. Because it was so crowded, everyone was just talking about it, it, it was just so much fun. <laughs> That's my answer to that question. <laughs> That's my answer to that question. <laughs> Comic-Con has, has changed a lot since uh, since sci-fi tonians and sadly it's not the same as it was there's been a lot of different sort of players coming into the fold well some of your favorite tv and film stars will be here in texas this weekend for the latest installment of celebrity fan fest the first event last november was a huge success attracting people to the alamo city by thousands those have not taken off in the same way um, as as alamo city was at that time it was sort of a golden moment i guess in some ways unfortunately i don't think Alamo City Comic Con has changed for the better. I guess it was a year and a half after Sci-Fi Tonians came out. The, the fight to be a vendor in the show ended up being very tight for where the show producers were very personable and I could say, oh, I know the producer of this show and I could go up and talk to him. Um, and know that he cared about the fact that I didn't have S hooks or that my table didn't come with a covering. Now it was, I was lucky if I got to talk to the assistant of the assistant of the assistant of the assistant. The last show I went to was the last show that they held at the Henry B. Gonzalez Center, which was in Memorial, Memorial Day of 2017. And I remember being so shocked because even preview night, which is usually the night that they use for the press and for vendors, was so dead. 
And I remember sort of being conflicted and, and it not really being able to, it didn't click for me, like, wait a minute, like, is it dead or is it is it me or is it really dead? All the prior shows, there was excellent attendance. So it was 70,000 plus. And this show was not it. You couldn't talk to the show producer because they were never around. His assistant was never around. The crowds weren't there. The crowds were not only not there, there, it was, it was like a ghost hall some of the times. You could definitely tell where they had cut some corners. And the show really felt, their 2017 show really felt like it was a show that was just random and it was just randomly put together. And, um, you know, I mean, it, that was the year where, you know, two big films were going to come on. You had the Justice League, you had, um, which is coming out in November, you had the, the anticipated The Last Jedi, which now everybody hates, but back then nobody knew what to expect from that movie. And, you know, at the Comic-Con, you know, you had random guests like Nick Carter was to your corner, and here you had Christy Alley, and over there you had Val Kilmer, and then you had some random has-been, and it's like, it was almost like they were just throwing balls to the wall and see whatever, whatever, see what, what would happen. And um, it, it was definitely a very, very um, disappointing show because you could tell the heart was just not there. I lost so much money that show. And I just couldn't recoup from that. That was the last, and I, I told, I emailed the producer and I said, I can't believe how different this show was run from all the previous shows. It was like night and day, two totally different shows. And basically I was told, well, you're not, our big money maker anyway. I'm done. I will never give that person another dollar. Um, afterwards, they changed the venue. Many things happened, so I do feel like it has it, it has changed a lot. Not in the greatest way. With the venue changes and, and all the other stuff, I feel like a lot of the energy may have been lost. Um, but the heart, I feel like it's still there. You know, it's still there. Uh, they definitely got some things to work on. I know there's been a few um, articles and, and this, this, and that. Organizers of the San Antonio Comic Convention are apologizing for a costume some consider to be blackface. The photo drew criticism on social media. How a contest host at the Alamo City Comic Con dressed up as a fictional character called Powerline from the Disney a goofy movie. I mean, I've basically done the study of every Comic Con that, that's happened in town since Sci Fi Tonians with my students. And so they go to the con, they collect the data, um, they report back on it, and I read their reports. And over time, what I've seen consistently is less satisfaction. The Alamo Dome was just too big for, for it in some ways and too small in other ways. Um, Students didn't enjoy it as much. They felt it wasn't it wasn't the same as when it was at the convention center. And I think that that's sort of a sad uh, aspect of it. When the show quit becoming about the culture, and I feel like it started becoming about the money. I haven't really had any conversations with their CEO since 2017, and because the current documentary that I'm doing is about Star Wars fandom in Texas. Um, Alma City Comic Con hasn't participated in any shape or form, nor will they be featured in that documentary in any shape or form. So I don't know what's fact from what's fiction. I don't know what's the extent of truth. Um, and I, of course, it would be very rude of me to pick up the phone and say, hey, I, <laughs> I heard you owe a lot of people money. <laughs> Let's talk about it. You know, that, that's not in my business. Um, um, but one thing that I can say is, when I think of Alamo City Comic Con, I don't think so much about the employees or the people behind the scenes or the uh, corporation. I think of the fans and I think of the community and I think of the people that 
that were responsible for the success of this convention because at the end of the day it is because of that community it is because of those fans that this convention was so successful and um, unfortunately from from what I've heard it seems that that they have forgotten about that community We've had conversations because we're all actually close friends, so we've had and, some and of this these... was by design. He wouldn't let us see this beforehand. No, because so... I didn't know you were going to be so forthcoming. I didn't realize everybody else was going to be so forthcoming. Um, people in the geek community here in San Antonio, we have tried to be kind yeah. and be quiet and not, you know, be too negative about what happened, but we also know that it was a negative experience. Well, it's also 2020. Yeah. So if you're going to be negative, be negative. This year. Right. But <clears throat> uh, it was just like everybody said in the clip that you showed it was that first year, it was this fabulous thing, right? To have in San Antonio and it, it felt so alive and it, it felt thought through and, and there was rhyme and reason. And then, later when you said it felt like they were just throwing some stuff at the wall to see what would stick. That was how I felt. And they like, we went and we had booths every year, you know, to try to promote this and to try to give people a place to go and like show off their cosplay and stuff like that. And we just kept getting stuck in smaller and smaller corners and like ignored. And then it was like these, like y'all said, like really weird celebrities. Like, why are they even here? Like, what does that even have to do with fandom and geekiness? So it was, I'm glad that you kind of addressed it in this because I know Sci-Fi Italians kind of showed that that beginning, right? That beginning when it was so awe-inspiring and now it's like... I mean, it was something that we didn't have before and then it just turned into something not so great. The first one was great. The second one was great. The third one was like an encore presentation of what worked in that second year. Yeah. yeah. And the fourth... I didn't go to the... I didn't even go to the fourth one. The seventh... The... the fifth year which was 2017 i wasn't going to go to that one but i had been uh because of the current documentary that i'm making right now which is about star wars fandom in texas mm -hmm. i had been told by by apple um that peter mayhew was going to be there and that he could get me an interview right and um that had been a very hard year for me because i um i basically uh is my mic on? Oh. I had basically live. We're live. Um, yeah. I had basically like it had been a very challenging year. My grandmother had passed away, and it was Memorial Day weekend. My family, um, we were gonna go to Puerto Rico to spend some time with family, and so I canceled on that because I was told that hey, you know, Peter Mayhew's gonna be here. I know you want him for the interview for your documentary to interview him, and um, had my press badge and everything and. Um, Vince was there. I remember you were, uh, he told, um, Apple told me, oh, just go up to this table. He knows who you are. I've been telling him all about you. Um, and you can even schedule an interview in the hotel, which is perfect because when you go to these comic cons, I'm not going to do a tacky interview with the mic and Hey, what's up? You know, and there's a, yeah. I want to do, right. I wanted to do a sit down and I wanted him because in my story we have, um, he's from Texas and he lives in Texas, he lives in Texas at the time. Mm -hmm. And so Apple just says, go up to his, to his table. Went up to his table, waited, and I say, hi, I'm Alejandro Cabrera. Um, I'm here to schedule an interview with Peter Mayhew. And they were like, we're sorry. I was like, well, Apple told me that I could come here. Like, we're not, I look like, I look like a crazy person. Right. And I ha they see that I have my press badge. They see that I'm not clearly, I'm not a guest at the show. Right. But still, I look like a crazy person. And um, it, I decided, you know what, I'm not even going to, text them or anything i'm just gonna gracefully walk away mm -hmm. so that was the last time i went to the show and i remember because you came up and we were talking for a while after that i was like really well that was some of the reason why i so i wasn't even at that show i stopped going i remember and i called you because i said i said hey please can we go have dinner tonight i really need you uh -huh. and we went later and we had i think burgers or something we yeah was that was food. when we were fud wreckers yeah. back then so i um We've had similar things happen to us. You know, we're a small channel, but he
he had the capability to set up and he did that first year. Yeah. And he had asked us to do some pieces for his show and stuff like that. And, but then he would tell us the same things. Oh, well, you're going to go talk to so-and-so or whatever. And then we'd go stand in line like an idiot, wait so that they could get their people and then go talk to their, their handlers. And their handlers would look at us like, what? What are you talking about? And we're like, uh, well, we're supposed to be doing like this piece on Alamo City and like, for them, for their YouTube channel and stuff, and like we're interviewing. No, I don't think so. You can stand in line and wait, and like if we have a slow spot when there's no guests paying, then maybe the celebrity will talk to you. But this is where I feel like also was their town turn. So their first two years, what made them very successful was that they had a press room. We're living in the in this day and age where it's everything's about social media and videos. Nobody's watching news. Nobody's watching. You know, I want I like the view, but I watch it on YouTube. Right. <laughs> um, and, you know, if you're a company and you want to be profitable, you want to be successful, you need to embrace social media. Right. What worked perfectly for them their first few years was that they had a press room and you had people from all over covering it consistently. What's going on? If I'm sitting at home and I'm on Facebook or I'm on aware of YouTube, I'm going to see the reminder of, oh, there almost come Comic Con's going on. I'm going to go over there and I'm going to go check it out. Right. What sells? Celebrities. Because, you know, um, Comic book stories are still being consumed, but they're consumed in a different medium. And right. It's through movies and it's through celebrities. So that was such a missed opportunity. And it's free because a lot of the people would go there and cover it for free, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Um, and when they got rid of that, they I mean, it's like you're not Beyonce to release an album like that in the middle of the night and, and <laughs> make all these millions. You need to you need to embrace social media, you need to do promotions. Right. And that's why I say success is a double edged sword. If you don't have a set of values, if you don't have a sense of self, when success finds you, you will lose yourself because you don't you don't know that thing that made you successful. And I feel like success here was a double edged sword. Right. But so I noticed something. Mm -hmm. I um you sent me you sent me the uh, I got a hold of the the poster, mm -hmm. sci-fi Tony poster, and we just saw the the trailer. Mm -hmm. Apple was in neither of those. So can Correct. you? So uh, that wasn't. That was something that I. That was something that I thought about very cautiously. Um, I again, I haven't been a part of. I haven't gone to any shows or anything. Mm -hmm. I haven't been in contact with Almost City Comic Con since 2017. I've been focused on my new documentary that comes out 2022. Um, but throughout the years, because of my work on Cypertonians. People automatically assumed that I had some sort of relationship with Almost City Comic Con, or that I was hired by them, or that I'm connected to them, which in no, I never was. Right. Um, and you know, we we did the story 2014 to 2015, and when it was done, that was it. You know, again, you mm -hmm. go on, you go to your right. separate ways. Um, but people still felt because of the success of Sci-Fi Twins that I was still connected, and so they would come to me and they would volunteer information and they would share with me their frustrations. Um, and, um, I have heard all kinds of stories throughout the years and rumors and allegations. And so it was very clear to me that, um, people have certain feelings about Animal City Comic Con. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to keep the conversation within the community. And again, like Animal City Comic Con was one of the stories in the documentary. There are many other stories. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to keep the reunion in the conversation within the community. Within and so community. I felt that inviting Apple to participate in the reunion would have been like bringing Alamo City Comic Con and would have been also, uh, I didn't want it to seem like a commercial for Alamo City Comic Con. Right. And because. so I, I did not invite him to participate. Um, but having said that, I will always hold that moment and that documentary in a very special place in my heart. And I will always be very grateful for that moment and that opportunity. Mm -hmm. and. You know, I'm not trying to erase anybody from the documentary. That person was a part of that moment, and that moment did exist, and that was real. Mm -hmm. But in terms of now, you have to be aware, and you can't be tone deaf, and you have to sort right. of respect everything. So I, I just felt, let's just keep the conversation within the community about the documentary. And um, that's what we did. So what do you... Is a lot of this focused on specifically just 
Alamo City Comic Con, or is it more? So, no, it's actually, um, a lot of it is actually, it's really, it's a, it's an honest, it's a reunion video, it's a positive video. Mm -hmm. um, we asked the question, right. how has Alamo City Comic Con changed since, since, since Sci Fi Finish? Because Alamo City Comic Con was one of the themes in the story. Right. I knew very much that it was a question that I was very uncomfortable of asking and mm -hmm. answering. Um, but if it would have been successful, it would, or if, regardless of Alamo City Comic Con being successful or not successful, it was a question that was going to come up. And so yeah. we were just talking about what happened and, and, uh, but ultimately, no, ultimately it's a great video. It's a positive video. It's about our experience. Um, well, so you Do told us that the, the professor is still running his class. The pro UTSA so professor, that's, yeah, he's still running his class at UTSA. The young lady that does cosplay, is she still she, in the fandom, or is she kind of had to give that up a little bit? So Stephanie is not cosplaying anymore, but she's actually working with me on my upcoming documentary. Nice. Um, helping me build a lot of the wardrobe that I wear. And Teresa Gonzalez, she hasn't done a Comic-Con since 2017. Joey, I believe he still does some. He still does the Wookie Wookie walk, and I think the zombie walk. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, for the most part, a lot of us haven't really like done much. I mean, what? I've been working on my stuff behind the scenes. One thing that uh, I, I'm wondering about: does the pay patriotism thing come up the in this reunion? The patriotism. I don't know that one. So then, no. Your answer no. would be no. That does no. Not come <laughs> oh, the pay patriotism. Yeah. Yeah. No, I but I know that story. Yeah. I know that story. So there's a lot of stories that I've heard behind. There's a the, lot of things. There's a lot of yeah. rumors and stuff like that. And well, I had somebody reach out to me. I had I remember I think it was in 2015. This person's company was one of the paid vendors, uh, or like what do they call contractors? Mm -hmm. They were in charge of doing pipe and drape and doing all the media stuff. A legit company. Um, and they, this person reached out to me in late 2015 and said, Hey, do you have any footage of anybody at, with Alamo City Comic Con talking about our company positively? And I was like, no. And I was like, that was so, that's such a random question. Like a weird, yeah. And I mm -hmm. said, why? What's going on? And this person alleged that I, that, um, apparently Alamo City Comic Con skipped out on a, I think it was $300,000 bill and that they were suing them because they hadn't paid them so i freaked out because this person was saying like i'm gonna need footage so we might need to go to court and i freaked out i'm like look like i'm not so i called <laughs> i called the ceo i called you know i called apple and i said hey what's going on this person reached out to me and told me this information um i mean if they subpoenaed me i'm gonna have to give them footage so i just want to give you a heads up like this is what's going on and he said to me that apparently that um, this person was upset because they were they didn't do a good job and they were not asked back for the third year show. Oh. Um, whether that's true or not, whether any of the allegations are true or not, I don't know. I'm not a private investigator, thank God. <laughs> um, but it was it was it was very shocking because we I've heard similar allegations and rumors right. and stories like that. So, so in your first documentary, Sci Fi Tonians. Mm -hmm. Because San Antonio, right? Mm -hmm. Right? San Antonio, yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're San Antonians. So if you're watching this from somewhere else, that's where that came from. So that focused on the San Antonio culture. Correct. Um, now this documentary that you're going to release in um, 2022, mm -hmm. that's encompassing all of Texas. Is that so correct? The the what I'm releasing tomorrow is a reunion video for Sci-Fi Trans. But in 2022, I'm releasing a documentary about Star Wars fandom in Texas. And I've been filming for the past five years. And so you see it from different points of views. You guys are in it. We're they actually already in filmed. It. We already filmed about two years ago. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's exciting because you get to see all of Texas and you get to see how Star Wars and Texas are connected, which is more connected than what you think. So now that you've done this reunion that's coming out tomorrow, after you're done with Star Wars, do you foresee wanting to do something else that's San Antonio centric again, or? I, I don't know. I, I'm open to anything. I would like to do something outside of geek, uh, something outside of like the geek culture. Mm -hmm. um, maybe do something, I don't know, something different. But I mean, I'm all about story. If there's a great story, and to me, story's what drives me. And if there's a great story, I'll be the first one to jump on board. Yeah. 
So uh, this reunion uh, video is coming out tomorrow? It comes out tomorrow at 9 p.m. And that's going to be on the Urban Journalist YouTube page? On the YouTube page, yeah. Okay. I'll send you the link just in case. I, I, I need to get better at this. <laughs> you need to get better at promoting yourself. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> we got an awesome video, though. But it's an, it's yeah. an amazing video. It's I mean, we, we talk about that part of Comic-Con and where it's been five years, but it's ultimately a positive video. Um, and But, of course, everybody wants to know the cheese mix, so right. <laughs> we have to put that out. But it's ultimately a great video. Well, since you did that convention and you did that documentary, have you done, have you gone to any of the other conventions here in San Antonio or? So not in San Antonio, Okay. but for the filming of my upcoming Star Wars one, I did go to the one in Houston, Comic Palooza, mm -hmm. but I was there mainly filming with subjects that were traveling to the convention, Right. Saber Guild, which is a nonprofit um, Star Wars organization. And so I was just there filming with them as they did what they were doing. But other than that, no, I haven't been to um, to any Comic Cons or anything. Been. else. I, and I, I, I'm so, it's become such a cookie, cookie cutter thing. Everybody's doing the same thing. And someone told me recently, it's like the bubble, the Comic Con bubble burst. Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. And everybody has a Comic Con. You go to Victoria, there's a Comic Con. Everybody's doing that, you know. And um, I don't know, like it just didn't it's become so mainstream that it's lost that passion. So people don't know that Alejandro and I are kind of catty um, yes, behind, behind the scenes. scenes. <laughs> yes. And so one year we were at a convention and we were like basically arm in arm and you we were like, let's, name, we were at Alamo City Comic Con and we were arm in arm and we were like, let's go to the flea market and see what they have. And so we were down there on the vendor floor because it was a hot mess. It was like a flea market. Well, there was something with like a little, what was it, like a little... Uh, they had like a little lemur or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, there was a girl doing belly dancing. I was like, what the? What, what is It was just was a really hodgepodge of mess. Comic books, yeah. Yeah. It was a hodgepodge of mess. And so. There was like a BDSM table. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. It was a mess. It was a mess. And a lot of the conventions have gotten that way. They've just, it's like you said, just throw it at the wall, whatever, whoever will come and give me money to have a booth. It's just That's like, blah. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then let me have every D-list celebrity that nobody even knows what they were ever in come, and it's just a hot mess. So I hope San Antonio, in that regard, you know, looks back at your documentary, and maybe this will make some people look back and say, oh, like that, we were excited. We did love that, right? Because you do show that. It, it, it gave me chills when I saw the Sci-Fi Tonians the first time, because to have this town that is seen as like we're a big town that everybody sees as podunk basically right and so to see us in this light of oh hey like we are as cool as austin don't come at us bro right I mean, <laughs> and then to see that we could like be those people in other people's eyes it really gave me hope and now we're kind of like we've fallen back again and, and it's like it's what has happened to almost comic con it's really sad and you don't cheer for anybody's failures right i really hope um that that they find their way again and um i really hope that um there is success but the truth is the the geeky culture in san antonio is still alive and it's still thriving and um mm -hmm. the passion is still there so so how do you feel that your documentary making skills have changed since sci-fi tonians oh my gosh it's changed i mean i look back at sci-fi tonians now and I it, but we, even like, then, it was a great was documentary because like, when it was I, like a white canvas, you know, I'm mm -hmm. a storyteller. I had never done something longer than 15 minutes. It was the first time that I had something in the movie theaters. It was the first time that I sold out a movie theater, um, and so it was like a white canvas, and I was kind of experimenting and trying different things. But the upcoming one is so different. It's it's a much more ambitious. The one that comes out in 2022 is a much more ambitious narrative. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm excited for that one. There's times where I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'll, I, I send you guys stuff. Yes, he sends yeah. us stuff sometimes, like, and I'm like, oh, please, let this come out. Hurry right. up, child. <laughs> I want it so bad. It's going to be it's gonna be great. It's going to be I, so yeah, good. It's gonna, yeah. I'm excited for it. The perspectives that you have and the different parts of the fandom and for everybody to see from, you know, collectors, to builders, to like all these people and the love that they have and the different kinds of love that they have. That's what I'm excited for people to see because people think that, I think people think that geeks 
fit in this one little gross hole sometimes. And so I think that you're going to kind of blow some of the lid off of that. And I'm excited to see that. We see it from a different lens. So I'm excited about that. Excited. I'm excited about that. So how long is uh, the reunion video? Well, right now, it's about like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, it's about 20 minutes long. Um, and so... So there, people are lucky. They got a big chunk of it. Yeah, I wasn't going to show you guys yeah. that, but I was like, no. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was I wanna, nice. I I'll show it. them. I'll show them a little bit. And it's actually hot off the press. I just, <laughs> I finished it. I was like, let me, let me bring it. I was running. I thought I was going to come in late. So I made it almost in time. Yeah. Just barely eased in the door. <laughs> eased in. Here we go. So. Let's pop this in. Put it on the computer. It's good. <laughs> I'm just so excited. I, I but don't look wait. at it. No. When yeah, I'm putting it on the computer, don't, don't look at it. I was like, okay. I want you guys to react <laughs> yeah. to it and get a genuine reaction. Yeah, I think people are really going to enjoy watching this because uh, I think people are really missing what sci-fi Tonians back in the day uh, because it was the first time uh, we had seen something like this come out of San Antonio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I was really I was excited so about it. Surprised because I was like, they had, when it came to promoting Almost the Comic Con, they had this amazing piece of work. And I thought they so. could have used it in so many other ways. Mm -hmm. You know, I still have people messaging me the professor still shows it in his class and it's part of the curriculum at the U university of san antonio and they'll show it in his class and mm -hmm. i still have students asking me questions and you know they still connect it so people are still connecting to it right and um it was such a piece of work and it's like you know my gosh like we could have really used this i would if it and... was me i would have because <laughs> it was free and it yeah. was out there and i would have put it out everywhere and mm -hmm. so I love I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And I I just the clips I've seen from your new one, I'm just like I wish I would have known y'all because I would have put y'all. But um but you guys have the next one. So it's yeah, be, yeah, yeah. Well but we got introduced like right as you were finishing it. Yeah. And uh and at first I'll I'll tell you the truth. At first yeah. when we, we I think I mentioned this when we talked about it before once we were friends already, that um we thought it was done for an Apple show, just like, oh, look at me. And when I saw it for the first time, I was like, this is just about the fans. Yeah. And I was like, this I was is amazing. Too, yeah, this is we were, amazing. Like, we, you know, we were going and we we're like, oh, it's another person who's going to think Apple is so amazing and it's going to be the Apple documentary, but whatever. Like, he's cute. He's nice. We like him. And <laughs> so we go and then we were both like looking at each other in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so that's how we feel so if you haven't seen it yet and we're going to post it up tomorrow yeah um, as well so that you can see it with the reunion but if you haven't seen it you should definitely go watch it because it, it, it gives you all the feels especially if you're definitely it. yeah definitely i really enjoyed it i can't wait to see your new uh star wars so what do you what do you expect real quick what do you expect to do with that documentary uh, well, uh, I, I just want to release it right now. That's my biggest thing. I, mm -hmm. I put so much work into it and I've been so passionate about it. And it touches on a lot of themes of things that are currently going on in the world. I think we need a good story to remind us. Um, one thing that I've been so fascinated is how Star Wars has the ability of connecting people from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. In the story, we have a police officer who dresses up as a stormtrooper um, to do charity work. We have a teacher who uses Star Wars in the classroom to inspire Mm -hmm. um kids uh, from low income um we have so many different points of views and it's been also a great opportunity for me because you become an adult and i stopped caring about star wars when i turned um 16 so all of a sudden started caring about chanel and shopping right and as an adult it was amazing getting to reconnect and mentally and emotionally trace that special moment in my childhood because i was a huge star wars fan still am mm -hmm. and so it's been amazing uh, almost like touching the hand of my um uh, innocence very nice so very nice so if you haven't seen sci-fi tonians go and look up sci-fi tonians on youtube or you can also go to uh the urban journalist uh that youtube uh, page and check it out because it's great and then you'll see that uh you'll see the reunion tomorrow at 9 p.m central time uh so check it out uh i, I i'm 
I'm, I can't wait to see it. Yeah. But thanks for checking us out. Uh, if you haven't clicked on that subscribe button, click on subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you know the next time we go live. Uh, but thanks for checking us out. And Vince? I'm Colleen. That's I'm Alejandro. And thanks, Stuart. Geek out, I say.